My first full day in the Netherlands was spent with late bloomer follower Paul Solefeld. He came to Driebergen to pick me up from Becky's and drive me to Almere, the newest city of the Netherlands, which was built on land reclaimed from the sea. The first house was finished in 1976, and by 2017, Almere had over 200,000 citizens. Approximately 120,000 are Dutch natives, 17,000 are European immigrants, with 65,000 non-European immigrants, one-third of which are from Suriname, the former Dutch colony and smallest country in South America. Well, I can hardly believe it, but I am standing in Almere, the Netherlands, and I am at Onze Volksdowne, which is a huge glass enclosed allotment. And I am with my new friend, Paul Solefeld, who has been following Late Bloomer for three years and claims that I have inspired him to grow a garden. Right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul? Hoi, ik ben uh, Paul. Uh, wat fijn dat jullie er zijn bij uh, onze volkstuinen onder glas en ik wil jullie graag een rondleiding geven. So let's go. Check it out. <laughs> Welkom ons. Welkom bij ons. Paul has an allotment at Ons, a former glass enclosed flower nursery turned community allotment garden. The first of its kind in the Netherlands. Ons, which means our in English, was developed by Ron Van Zwet, a former rose grower who wanted to work directly with his customers. There were lush green gardens under glass as far as the eye could see. Follow me. We're here at Onze, the allotments. Many people grow um, Suriname uh, vegetables, such like let me have a look. Such like Suriname eggplant mm -hmm. called Boulanger. Okay. Of course, they've got coal plants. Many mice on this place everywhere. Corn? Corn. This is also a Suriname vegetable. Very healthy. And it's called goma viri. How do you eat it? And you can uh, walk it in a pan, or you can eat it in your green smoothie. Ah, very nutritious. Very nutritious. And then we go under many uh, peppers, all kinds of peppers, and they grow them on a thread. String. String on a string. Yes. Because you can grow vertically. You can grow vertically your uh, cucumber. And your tomatoes on a string should be cherry tomatoes or the bigger ones. Absolutely loaded. They're ripe already, almost. This one is a little snack cucumber. I don't know the <laughs> name anymore. <laughs> so can you put a fence around your allotment if you want to? Yeah, you can put a fence around, but not higher than one meter fifty. This is Malabar spinach. And this is Malabar spinach. Wonderful. Or oh, Suriname people call, called it poi. Poi. Suriname. They uh, like the green big apples. Sour. Oh. Over my right is uh, Dennis. Hi Dennis. <laughs> and he's got a really a great area for which he's gardening. Wow. Many tomatoes and you smell it? I do. It's uh, in Netherlands it's called a brandnetelgier. Uh -huh. And it's very nutritious for the uh, for the plants. Mm -hmm. They take all the ni nitrogen mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Let's see your place. Yes. Okay. We're going to my place. Okay. Follow me. All right. Okay, my place is down here. Hi, Agnes. Hi. 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 Everything. 
my other neighbor garden he's not here oh wow it's just amazing this is a uh, pumpkin we have another uh, Suriname uh, vegetable that's called klaroen in Dutch very healthy and now we're heading into my garden okay you're welcome <laughs> how do you say welcome in Dutch welcome <laughs> <laughs> that's easy <laughs> I learned that to protect the fertile clay soil of the former Zuiderzee, no chemicals or pesticides are allowed. They embrace natural biological control of pests. We're starting here. I've got my uh, strawberries in a tower, but I prefer them in pots because okay. they grow much better. Golden uh, beets. beets throughout my garden there are uh, growing tomatoes of which i'm very fond of and chard mm -hmm. over here very nice colors these are the blueberries this is broccoli and tomatoes already with a basilicum this is a, a big one it's called absinthe and these are very small ones called Dancing with Smurfs. They're, they're the dark one. <laughs> like a blueberry? It's like a blueberry, yeah. 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 How many varieties do you have growing? I've got uh, 21 varieties. How that many plants do you have? I've got 40 plants. Wow. And you've got bees in here. And Yeah. And I've got some row of uh, carrots. Carrots and tomatoes. Yeah, I don't know if that goes well, but we'll see at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Here I've got something else. There are peanuts. I've been imported them from uh, America. The red peanuts? It's, um, well, no, it's the white Valencia. Time over there and over here. This is something nice too. That's, That's a melon pear. I don't recognize that. He blooms here. Here. Big sweet apples. They taste like uh, ananas, pear. This uh, dilla. Beautiful. In Dutch we say boerkool. Is this lovage? Yeah, lovage. Yeah. Lavas. Just lovage. seen that. That's awesome. And you've got um and I've got purple ka kale. Kale. Over here is my uh, pear growing uh Espanyard. like an espanyard. This is comfrey. You can put the leaves in water and then it gives very mm. much fertilizer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. These are my um pepper. More kale, lacinata. Yeah, more kale, but it's called uh lacinata. Lacinata? That's what we call it. Okay, we call it in Dutch we call it palmkool. It's called North Carolina Pink. And it's gonna be big. These are the purple beans. Oh, you that's can beautiful. It started here that's already, the beans. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. And this is a uh, cauliflower. cauliflower. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge, yeah. You've got a lot of corn in a tiny space, so that's yeah. gonna be interesting. Yeah, and that's gonna be... Uh, beans. Here we have, these are scarlet runners, right? These are scarlet runners, yes. Beautiful. And these are soldier beans. These are uh, little white beans, you let them dry. It's a dry bean. Mm -hmm. And um, when he's dried, he's got a silhouette of a soldier on it, in black. Wow. It's very nice. Well, I've got them in the garden center. Okay. I'll take them there. Okay. This is the... Yeah, in Dutch we say kouseband. It's a Suriname uh, vegetable. It looks so. familiar. I can't. It is a bean. It's a long bean. Wow. New Zealand's uh, spinach, mm -hmm. and this is a wheat. It must go out. Okay. Here, and with weeds, I just lay them on the ground, and they're gonna. The worms are gonna take it down. Oh, nice. I've got two two strings and lay a knob 
here mm -hmm. and then tie them around. Not too tight because right. the stem is gonna be bigger. And then you're gonna like this. You just, when it grows, you take out the suckers. You just gonna roll it around and grow like this and then I'll top them. At about six feet, so you can reach it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll come every day and I'll spend about a quarter, give her water, take a uh, leaf for my uh, green uh, smoothies. On my day off, I stay longer. Yeah, because you like it. Because I like it. <laughs> Just uh, I like also sitting there and watch everything. Grow. I think you need an umbrella though. If you're yeah, gonna I, sit need, <laughs> I need. I need it. Is this about the temperature that it usually is in here? A few days ago, it was 30 degrees outside, and inside I think 36. That was a quick water, and then I was melting. <laughs> Tell me about your sweet potatoes because they look so healthy. I take one potato from the store put it in a glass of water and then let the runners come out and take them off and put them in a glass of water and those runners I've set here in this I see they're reaching out into your pathway here yeah, so. so every day I'm taking them back I'm, I'm leading them this side uh, 90 97 degrees out here how your cool season vegetables yeah. not wilting in this heat no or bolting this is what I don't understand me neither <laughs> <laughs> but they're doing it very well and over there at your right there's a curcuma you ordered it from Thailand yes okay this is my uh, go goji berry or in Dutch we say goi besen and I hope this year some berries gonna grow on it and you're growing it like esplanade I'm growing it like expl esplanade mm -hmm. and uh, the meaning is that those uh, bamboo branches are gonna be placed all over here and then it can grow my name is Lisa this is the, my allotment welcome and I'm growing several vegetables like bitter melon, which is over there, and a veggie which is native to my country, Suriname. Uh, and this is called Antroa. And it's uh, a, quite a bitter apple, appleish type of fruit, which can be eaten with uh, beef or any fish, even. And it's wonderful. It's very healthy as well. How long have you been growing your own food? Oh, like for the past three years now. And how has it changed your life? Tremendously. And it's been such a wonderful um, event of growing your own food, uh, knowing what you're growing, how it's growing, what you're eating. And it's very beneficial, of course, for your health. Right, right. right. It's really hot here now. When do you do your gardening? Either in the early morning or the late evenings when it's absolutely less hot. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite thing to grow and why? Oh, which is bitter melon. And why? Because it's really, really, really healthy. The most bitter fruits are the most healthiest fruits. So this is the one here. I will get a lot of bananas, but I'll just have to be patient. It would take me a year more. Then we would have some bananas here. And got a lot of peppermint, all kinds of peppermint. That's the citron, strawberry, that's just the normal one, that's the, the peppermint. Buman, it, it's iemand van uit Amerika die een, uh, een opnames maakt. It's uh, a bit of muddy, but this is all what I have for the moment. My tomatoes and some typical Surinamese um, uh, vegetables here. And uh, it's just coming up slowly, slowly, slowly. Hi, my name is Eliante and I was born in Suriname. I'm living here in the Netherlands for more than 35 years. This is my beautiful organic garden and I love gardening because I know what I'm eating. And um, I just advise everyone to do the same. That's awesome. This one, oh, call okay. it Klaroon. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also has an Indian name, they call it Baji.
I am sitting with the mastermind behind this amazing garden. And this is Ron, what's your last name? Van Zwit. Yeah. Van, yeah. Van, Van Zwit. Van Zwit. Yeah. <laughs> Ron Van Zwit. Tell me how you got the idea to do this amazing thing. Yeah. I was uh, before a rose grower. For my, I was professional rose grower. And I look for an alternative for the rose grower. It going bad with the roses. So I look for something different. And I want uh, something to produce. And I have I be going to the customer. So to the end gebruiker. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought about this idea. And I, I ask a few people if they like it. And they like it. So and I started five years ago. Ron was just telling me that he was the first to do the enclosed indoor allotment garden. Yeah. And now you say there are three or four? Three or four other places in uh, Holland where they do this. Uh huh. And uh, if you don't grow inside in Holland, is it impossible? No, no, you can grow outside. It's only a few months a year. You start in uh, April, May and ends in the uh, August, September for the weather. In the wintertime, you can grow outside. No, it's too uh, cold. Too cold. Yeah. So this enables how many people do you have uh, participating in uh, this? We're growing quick. We have at this moment 240 people who rent a plot by me. 250, 250 people, people have people. a lot. Yeah, yeah. And um, some have bigger than others. Yeah, we have plots from 12 square meter to uh, 100 square meter. Wow, so it's just however much people want to afford. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. what do you charge for an allotment? A plot from 12 square meter, we, the people pay 22 euro a month. 22 euros yeah, a and, month. Yeah, and that's inclusive the water, the biological animals, uh, compost, it's all included. So for 22 euros a month, you not only get the ground, which is enclosed, so you can grow all year, but you get the compost, there are community wheelbarrows, so you don't have to buy those, that major tool yourself, and uh, you have plant exchanges and plant sales, so there's a lot of community yeah, activity. And important is, we grow biological here, so everything goes biological. The pest uh, management is biological, so they share, or you provide, yeah, provide. ladybugs, lacewings, yeah. And uh, what else? Is there another insect that you provide? Yes, uh, slime whisper. Yes, I don't know the name. In okay, English, okay. Well, all the, all the uh, uh, bees you can find for the, the, the bed bees we yeah. have. They have beehives, so you have bees yeah. living here. Uh, the windows are open, so yeah. bees theoretically could come in. Native bees, right? Yeah. People come here and they learn from each other. They talk with each other and they learn a lot of new things over the vegetables, over what they eat, what they're gonna do, how they, when they have a problem, they help each other. It's really nice. And I'm noticing you have a real multicultural yeah. group of farmers here. Yeah, yeah. Now, we have also the Dutch people, but a lot of people coming from Suriname or China or Taiwan. A lot of things I never know about it, never heard about it. But I mean, we have okra, taaienblad, yeah, that's a tro tropical uh, crops, uh -huh. yeah, and they grow it here. What I'm finding really interesting here is that I'm seeing what we consider to be cool season crops growing in, this is like 95, to me this is like 95, 97 degree heat yeah. out here, and they're not wilting. They're not... No, it's, uh, they, yeah, yeah we, we give them easy water, so they have a lot of water. And there's no wind, 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 there's no wind. wind yeah. And the ah. wind makes a lot of plants going wilt. Wilt, yeah. Ah, I see. It's control, a little bit control. Every plot has its own water top point, and the water is coming from the rain. I, it's falling down on the glass. It's come together in a big basin, and I used it for the plants. So it's only raining water. How many gallons of water do you have in, uh, your, in your storage facility? I think 3,000 cubic meter water. Oh, that's a lot. There's a lot of water, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you must have in the summertime, the rain falls mostly in the in winter time, and we use the most water in the summertime. So yeah, that's... Do you well. ever run out of rainwater? No. 
Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, this <laughs> this nature. Yeah. Well, it's nature, but uh, you have a great hand in it, in the success of it. Yeah. yeah, we do it together. It is not only me, it is my customers, everybody, we do it together. Right. And that's really, we do it together. Yeah. That's huge. And you can see here yeah, the range coming from off the, the roof and going inside. Of course. Oh, wow. Let's go out and see. Yeah. The way to grow upside down. Oh, tomatoes? Tomatoes. Yeah, it's a test because uh, all, all of them in the ground have, have blossoms. And this one does blossom and fruit first. This, uh, Are you from Suriname from also? From Suriname also, yes. <laughs> Did you uh, grow up here? I grew up here, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. How long have you been in the allotment? Here? And uh -huh. I start November. Yes, and from the beginning on, uh, everything started growing. Wow, yes. how much time have you put into this? Because it's all full. Three, four times a week. If, I, if I'm free from work, I'll come in the, in the morning before it's too heat. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm coming early to work. <laughs> right, get it done. What get is done. this? Garden beans. Garden beans? Garden beans, yes. The big Sorry. beans, yes. They are growing like this. Oh, okay. This That's also from Suriname. That's from Suriname. That's from Suriname. This is uh, black eye beans. But they, they're gonna grow like this. this You've got everything all mixed together. Yeah, all mixed together, yes. <laughs> so you got cabbage with, uh, with yeah. eggplant. Yeah, and everything is growing. <laughs> I heard from him that uh, a few few plants are helping each other. Ah. They are friends. <laughs> so oh, we're gonna, right. I'm, I'm looking which one are friends, then I put them together. So you've learned a lot just since October. Yeah, since October I learned a lot, yes. When I was youth, uh, we had a, a garden also. In Suriname? In Suriname and oh. here also. You hear from Sour Shop? I put a, a bean and it's growing. <laughs> so it will not be big, but I'm, I'm glad that it's growing so I can use the leaves for tea. Ah. Good for your blood pressure. Oh, yes. that's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. The rain falling on the roof and come together in the pipes, the plastic pipes. Go in the pipes, outside, in the reservoir. Did you have that before with the roses? Yeah, also. Juice plus? Juice plus, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I've seen these in the U.S. Beautiful. I think this may be how I have to grow basil. I have a real problem growing basil. Yeah. This is the compost for, for the customers. Uh -huh. You take it here for in, in the open, mm -hmm. compost. Mm -hmm. They can use it. It's amazing. Yeah. Really, 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 yeah. Ryan grows tomatoes for a restaurant in this section here, yeah. and they look absolutely stunning. Yeah. How many varieties do you grow? I think we have here in, uh, 10 varieties. And I see you have these. Yeah, of course, for the bestuiving. In the UK yeah. and here. I, I'm just seeing bumblebees, what yeah. we call bumblebees, the black and the yellow. I've got hummus. Yeah, you bring them in and they fly the whole day. But when it is outside cold, homobees don't fly. But right. inside is always nice weather. So they feel it and they come out of the... All year? All year. When, we, when we have flowers. In the winter time, we don't have tomatoes. Oh, of course. We start always in March with tomato plants and cucumbers. Ah, oh, okay, even inside? Even inside, yeah. Okay. It is too cold and not enough light from, from outside. Right, because they have these very long days in the summer. It gets yeah. light like at 4 a.m. Yeah, it starts at 11 o'clock. And it goes, it's light until 10.30 p.m. Yeah, or, yeah. So, and, and then in the winter, what is it? When does yeah. the sun come up in the winter? At uh, 8 o'clock. And then it goes down? Uh, 5. At 5, so so you don't have enough sun hours. In the, sun, in the wintertime, we don't have enough sun hours. Yes. But obviously under here you can grow some things, right? All yeah. winter. All winter we grow vegetables and a variety of yeah, the salad, uh, onions, yeah, a lot of Dutch names, uh, pak soy, <laughs> Garlic, soy, uh, yeah, 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 soy yeah. cabbage, broccoli, yeah, yeah. all the things that don't flower. That's it. And the, and the yeah. summer vegetables flower and that's when the bees come out. Yeah, yeah. we grow the plant in the bottom of the sea. So they're growing their vegetables in the bottom, what was the bottom of the yeah. sea, and it was drained? 
Yeah. When they put dikes around, yeah. Yeah. remember in, in grade school, yeah. you learned about Holland putting the dikes around yeah. uh, the, the Staying whole five country? Staying five meters water here. Five meters? Five meters, yeah. Five meters of water used to be right here. And now they can grow all this stuff because the bottom of the sea is so mineral rich, yeah. right? Yeah, in fact, you can pick up seashell, pieces of seashell right out of the soil here. Please. And yeah. you're telling me that you graft tomatoes. Tomato and cucumbers. Or you grow grafted tomatoes. Yeah. So you buy them that way. Yeah. Because? Uh, they are stronger roots, much more tasteful tomatoes with strong roots. Is this something that the home gardener can do? No, that's not easy. I do it not by myself. I, somebody who do that every day do that for me. But when you are, have a contract to provide tomatoes to a restaurant, you can't have big mistakes. Like yeah, I might yeah, make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the I home can gardener have mis mistakes. This is one of the biological controls we used for aphids. Aphids, okay. They grow and they come out when they are big enough. And this has already happened here? Yeah. Yeah, they're all dead. Wow. You see the fly? I do. It's for this cherry, so... Okay, and what do they kill? Uh, white flies. Oh, yes. Okay. Trips. There are 1,500 mites in this bag. Okay. They're coming out of this small hole. Four or five weeks. They're going to hatch and all come out? Yeah, they're going into the, the plant and looking for the, for the eat. When they're hungry, they eat everything. Here you are creating habitat for beneficial insects yes. so that they crawl in here and make homes in here and you're using a coffee filter you just put it around and encourage your beneficial insects to live there so you're constantly looking and finding problems and the whole day and looking for <laughs> all day <laughs> and in searching for solutions and then you bring it in to the garden yeah. and offer it up to your customers yeah. well that's so that's my job i'll tell you with a little less mud <laughs> They are small. <laughs> We're going to try Giovanni's carrot. That is tender and juicy and flavorful. Flavorful. Okay. flavorful. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Ron. Yeah. I, I, I think what Ron is doing here is absolutely amazing because he, he's offering the opportunity for a lot of ordinary people to to be self-sufficient. Yeah. They like it. They go the own vegetable. They are happy. They are really happy here. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Grow your own food and you're happy. <laughs> That's important. Biological food for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> This is a uh, uh, place where I work. This is Almere plant, a uh, big garden center. And this is my section where I work the plants to grow. And you have seeds. And I have seeds over there. Tools. And tools and growing things. And you love working here? And I love working here, five days a week. After Paul treated me to a late lunch at the garden center, it was time to hit the road back to Driebergen. It's very flat here. We vowed to be best friends forever. But you have a lot of trees. These trees are, aren't very old. Because oh. this was all sea. This was this all was underwater? This, this was all sea. That's all? 60? Yeah. Goodness. How much of the power in this country is renewable energy? Solar, wind? Uh, not that much. Not that much. And I hope to be back. Wow.